tsunamis, one of the most terrifying natural phenomena known to man. Today, I will take you through the physics behind this incredible natural disaster. Okay, so before I can start talking about tsunamis, I just need to talk about normal ocean waves. And so these are all the different parts of a wave, just like we learned. Um, at the bottom here is a trough. At the top here is a crest. From a crest to a crest is a wavelength. The height right here, another word for this part would be the amplitude. And so we learned that there's two different types of waves. There's transverse waves and there's longitudinal waves. And we learned that ocean waves, just like electromagnetic waves, are transverse waves where the particles uh, oscillate perpendicular to the direction of the wave right here because the particles moving up and down um, while the wave moves horizontally. But in reality, ocean waves, they move in an orbital path. They move in a circle. And so in reality, a particle right here, if there was a particle point A, it wouldn't just be moving up and down. It would be moving in an orbital path. So in the ocean, these little orbital waves, they kind of go all the way down. So as the wave moves along, these little circles, all these wave particles are moving in little circles with each wave. And as you go further and further down, it has less of an effect. So the orbitals get smaller and smaller and smaller. And so in what is considered deep water, the depth of the water, so the depth, um, is greater than half of the wavelength. So in other words, the depth is greater than the distance from a crest to a trough, since that would be one half of a wavelength. Um, and then in deep water, the speed of the wave moving across the water depends only on the wavelength. So the longer the wavelength in deep water, the higher the speed. So waves with really long wavelengths move really fast in deep water. But in shallow water, that's when the depth is less than half of the wavelength. Uh, though speed of the wave depends on the depth because because the these the depth of the water is too shallow and so there's more friction going on with these little with these little orbital paths of the wave and so it'll slow the um, propagation of the wave across the water so in shallow water the speed of the wave depends on the depth rather than on the wavelength so now we're going to talk about what happens when a wave actually approaches the shore. So, as a wave is approaching the shore, obviously the depth decreases. And so once the depth gets to a point where um, it is less than one half of the wavelength, where the depth is, one, is less than the distance between the crest and the trough of a wave, just like we had right here, um, it becomes shallow water. And so then the wave enters shallow water. And um, be, when it enters sh more and more shallow water, when a wave gets to uh, shallower and shallower water, the speed decreases. The speed decreases as depth decreases because there's more and more friction going on at the bottom of the ocean right here with these little circles. And so um, when the depth decreases, so does the speed. But as we learned, uh, mechanical energy is conserved. So mechanical energy initial has to equal mechanical energy final, which means in terms of a wave, kinetic energy initial plus potential energy gravity initial has to eat your equal kinetic energy final plus potential energy gravity final because obviously in a wave there's no elastic potential energy. 
So as a wave is approaching the shore, the speed is decreasing, which means that kinetic energy is decreasing. And so if, if kinetic energy decreases, in order to keep the final amount equal to the initial amount, potential energy has to increase. And we know that potential energy is also equal to mass times uh, the gravitational constant times height. And as a result, the height increases as a wave approaches the shore. And a side note, also the reason why um, a wave, why it kind of forms this steep uh, front right here, it's because we know that waves travel faster in deeper water because there's less uh, friction going on with the, with the floor of the ocean and the water. And so this, the particles of water that are up here are going to be traveling faster than the particle waters down, particles of water down here because this is technically at a deeper, um, it's located at a higher depth than the particles down here. So these particles are moving faster than these, and so it forms this kind of steep front as a wave approaches the shore. Okay, so now for the fun stuff, now for tsunamis. So the origin of a tsunami is often an earthquake. And so what happens is that the bottom of the seafloor gives way. So you can kind of see here's the seafloor, often a region between two tectonic plates, and there's some lateral motion, uh, which displaces um, a large portion of water because often this is in the middle of the ocean where the depth is very, very large. And so any movement on the seafloor displaces a huge amount of water. So this is often referred to as a stuck area, and so the stuck area ruptures, releasing energy in an earthquake, and this is the amount of water that it is displacing, and so in this way an earthquake starts a tsunami. And a tsunami wave spreads in all directions, and you can kind of see this on this, di on this um, radar screen right here, that it moves in circles. Uh, waves refract towards regions of shallower water. So they move in these circles because they're moving towards the shore, towards regions of shallower water. So here's a quick demo of how waves travel towards regions of shallower water. So if you just poke the water, you can see how the waves are traveling in all directions in a circular path uh, towards where the water is shallower. And so, why does a tsunami become so large? So, a tsunami, one of the characteristics of a tsunami is they have an incredibly long wavelength. Their wavelength is often equivalent to about 700 kilometers, which is huge. And the depth of the water is often, in the deepest parts of the ocean, is maybe 10 kilometers. And so if you remember what I was talking about with deep water versus shallow water, the wavelength, so half of a wavelength would be 350 kilometers. And this is so astronomically large than the depth of the water that at no point is the depth greater than this. And so... In all parts of the ocean, um, tsunamis are always considered shallow water waves, which means that the speed is determined solely on the depth. Uh, it's proportional. So obviously they move at incredibly high speeds because the depth of the ocean is so great. And so as they get, so they're moving incredibly fast towards the shore. And as they reach shallower water, their kinetic energy decreases, which means their potential energy has to increase. And as a result, they grow larger and larger and larger 
until they reach the shore, at which point they often overcome all buildings in the region and lead to mass destruction. And so there's two ways that a tsunami can hit the shore. One is with a trough first and one is with a crest first. And so if it hits with a crest first, it's just a sudden surge of water without any warning. But if it hits with a trough first, the water recedes first. And often people are so interested in the fact that now they can see the bottom of the bay that they run out to go explore. But since the wavelength of the water is so great, it takes about 20 minutes for the crest to go to a trough to go to a crest. And so 20 minutes later, this huge sort of surge of water comes and leads to mass destruction. I hope some of you are awake long enough to gain something from this video. The end.